Investigators were able to find a lot about the Sutherland Springs shooter, Devin Patrick Kelly, almost immediately. Why were they able to put the pieces together in this case so fast while in Las Vegas, now a month old, we still know so little? For answers to that question and others, we turn now to NYPD officer and Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, who joins us live. Um, so, Dan, f first to the Texas shooting, um, apparently the Air Force did not, as you just heard Matt Finn report, enter this information about this man's court-martial and conviction and the year he spent in the brig into the criminal database that um, gun purchasers are run through. If they had put that information in there, would he have been prohibited from buying a gun? Yeah, he would have been prohibited from buying a gun, Tucker. And, and this is why uh, the radical left can't possibly win this gun control debate. I mean, Tucker, think about the argument they're making to us, right? The argument they're making to us is, oh, don't worry. Government can protect you. Listen, I love our military. God bless every man and woman that serves. But this was clearly a bureaucratic error that cost people their lives by officials in our government as they're making the very same argument, by the way, that we need new laws, despite the fact that the old laws didn't work because people in the government that are supposed to make new laws didn't cooperate with the laws we have now. And look at what we have on our hands. But yes, he would have been uh, stopped from buying a gun, and he wasn't, and look what happened. Right, and you see that with so many of our gun laws that are unenforced, including in the city of Chicago, where straw purchases are almost never prosecuted even as they complain that they're a source of the problem, which they, which they certainly uh, are. Why do we know so much, and thank heaven we do, about this atrocity and still so little about the one that happened in Las Vegas more than a month ago? Well, this, uh, this tragedy here, this, this fits the models we have from my experience in the Secret Service of targeted violence, where you've seen indicators in the past. We're seeing, you know, you and I have talked about the Vegas shooting on multiple uh, appearances here, and we said it doesn't make any sense because where are all the witnesses? Where are all the people coming out saying, you know, I saw something on Facebook that was strange. He said something at the local deli that was unusual. Where are they? The answer is nowhere. Nobody's found them yet, or they're there, and we just don't know about them. But in this case, we're seeing a litany of people come out and say, oh, there were odd Facebook posts. There's obviously a pattern of violent behavior. And as I've said repeatedly, when you look at models of targeted violence, Tucker, there's always a trail, always a trail. It's very rare, like in the Vegas shooting, where there's almost nothing there and it's a vacuum. So you don't think the investigation is different, but the, the, the crime is different. The perpetrator's different. Yeah, I mean, this guy seems to fit the pattern of people who go out there and a targeted violence, assassinations, school shootings, homicidal maniacs like this who decide to go into church. And we don't know the motive yet, but it appears there's some connection there. It yeah. appears that his desire, to, you know, to take out revenge or whatever it may have been on a family member or an in-law, he just uses violence as a way to, you know, show his power. And that's what he did. He took out 20 plus innocent people in his rampage there. But that fits the models we've seen in the past. Yes. What are the lessons for the rest of us of this? You know, Tucker, it pains me to say this, but churches are inherently vulnerable places. You know, you have the right to protect yourself. There are wolves out there. You know, there's a big conflict of visions, if I can steal a line from Thomas Sowell here. The left seems to believe that we can somehow legislate the evil out of people's hearts. You won't. Do not be a sheep. If you are a church, if you are a synagogue, you are in a uniquely vulnerable spot. It pains me to say that, but we live in a different time. You have an ingress, an, an exit and an entrance point in the back. Therefore, everybody comes out of the same spot. Right. Tucker, where's everybody's attention in church? Ahead. Where's the shooter going to come in? He's going to come in the back. You know, you also have the lack of cover or concealment. There's nowhere to hide. Why? Because people don't hide in church. They have to see what's going on in the altar. There's nowhere to go. It doesn't give me any joy in telling you that, but in 12 years as a Secret Service agent, if you were in a church or a house of worship, you have an obligation now to realize that we live in a different world. It's sad. These are black swan events. But the penalty for being involved in a black swan event like this is death. You, very, this has happened multiple right. times. You have to secure and harden up your location. It, it, I'm sorry I had to say that, but it is absolutely true in the times we live in. Dan Bongino, thanks a lot for that, as always. Yes, sir.